Hi everyone, Bjork Van Benedictsen here from Icelandic Embassy Studios and AudioIssues.com here for our second video in the series of using condenser microphones uh, to record great sounding music in your home studio. So we're sponsored by Aston Microphones and you can see the origin and the spirit here behind me. And in our last video we gave you a broad overview of condenser microphones, how they differ from the dynamic microphone and how and when you can use them to capture various instruments in your home studio. We also talked about the various characteristics of the Aston microphones, as well as gave you some tips on how to use uh, both cardioid, omni, and figure eight directional patterns to capture various instruments in your home studio. Today, we're gonna go into a little more detail and talk about how to record the acoustic guitar. So one of the first things that you should think about when you're recording acoustic guitar has actually nothing to do with the microphones themselves, but you wanna start with making sure that the instrument is in tip top shape. Uh, what that means when it comes to the acoustic guitar is making sure that the strings are fairly new, they're not dull and dead sounding because you wanna be able to get the proper resonance from the instrument and having strings that are um, are new but not not completely new is the is, will make your acoustic guitar sound you know the best it, the best it can be uh, if you have completely new strings i would recommend strumming it a little bit you know playing the sort of new string brittleness out of the instrument before you record it and then of course and you know i kind of I kind of wish i didn't have to stress this but you need to make sure that your instrument is in tune uh, because there's nothing worse than figuring out, you know, when you're in the mix phase that the acoustic instrument is, or the acoustic guitar or any other instrument for that matter, is uh, out of tune with the rest of the track. Uh, it's, uh, it's happened a lot and it's, you know, it's, it's a horror story for a reason. Uh, it's because it's true. But once you have the instrument in tip top shape, you know, newest strings, uh, tuned guitar, uh, then you can start thinking a little bit more about what microphone you're gonna use and where you're gonna place the microphone uh, to capture the instrument. So another thing to think about before you even start recording your guitar is think about the guitar selection and which or what type of guitar you want to record. Uh, of course, if you only have one acoustic guitar, that's the acoustic guitar you're gonna use. But if you have access to multiple types of acoustic guitars, there might be a guitar that's better suited to that particular song you're recording. Uh, for instance, say you have a track where you're just gonna record the acoustic guitar to be sort of a supportive player in the background. Uh, maybe you're just gonna have it be strumming and it sort of reinforces the, the rhythmical arrangement. Then you might wanna use uh, a smaller bodied guitar that has more high end than a low end, but than low mid body, uh, because then it'll, you know, stay back in the mix while cutting through, and but it doesn't clash with the other instruments of the arrangement. On the other hand, if you have a song that is more singer songwriter style, folky, where the acoustic guitar is sort of the main instrument or main player in the track, then you want a fuller bodied guitar where there's gonna be more uh, emphasis on the body and the thickness of the guitar sound than if you were just to have it be a supportive player in the arrangement. All right, so now that we've picked our acoustic guitar, it's time to find where it sounds the best in the room. So if you have an acoustic guitar player, you can have them walk around the room. You might find that uh, it sounds better in certain parts of the room rather than others. So once you find that there's you know a good balance between uh, the highs and the lows in the frequency spectrum of the instrument or it sounds a little more live or a little more brilliant in any way uh, or just you know sounds better to you as as the producer then have them stop and you know grab a chair and have them sit down and then start tackling the microphone positioning and uh, a good way to think about the guitar uh, in in the frequency sort of sense is that the high end is coming from the string the low end is coming from the sound hole, and sort of the mids are coming from the body in general. And a good sweet spot is to start with the microphone sort of a foot away, pointing at the 12th fret. That's widely considered the sweet spot of the acoustic guitar. 
Then, depending on whether you want you know, more high end or more bass, you can tilt the microphone one way or the other. Uh, you can even tilt it up or down depending on whether you want to accent the high strings or the low strings. So overall, uh, my, the mic position and the sort of off or on axis response of your mic really just depends on what you are looking for in your acoustic guitar sound and what function it has in the arrangement. A great way to do this, especially if you're recording by yourself, is to simply have headphones and move your guitar around the mic until you find uh, the sound that you are looking for in the headphones and then you hit record and see how that functions in the arrangement of the track that you already have. So my personal preference is to sort of have the mic maybe a foot or so away, uh, but not necessarily pointing exactly at the 12th fret because I find that usually it doesn't give me that uh, additional body that I need. So if I tilt it a little bit more so that it's pointing sort of, you know, around this area, not, not too much into the sound hole, but sort of over here, um, that captures the, the thickness of the low mids without sounding too boomy, and it also captures the sort of brilliance of the strings as well. So depending on how roomy you want your acoustic to sound, uh, you can move it either closer or further away. Uh, usually if you have a subpar home studio environment, you want to keep it as close to the instrument as possible without sounding uh, too unnatural because you want to reduce as much of the room sound as possible because it might not flatter the instrument as much as just adding a little artificial reverb in the mix instead. So if you want a very simple acoustic guitar sound um, or a good guitar sound using a very simple technique, of course, is you can use the Origins, for instance, just straight on the 12th fret, maybe pointing a little bit towards the sound hole if you, if you feel like it needs a little extra body, but that'll give you a perfectly great sound um, for a lot of singer-songwriter style stuff or just acoustic guitar in general. But if you want to get more adventurous and you have the spirit, you can actually use this technique called the MS or mid side technique where you have the mic in figure eight mode and you turn it 90 degrees from the other mic. So it's actually picking up the sides. Let's position this right here. And it has, you can see 
where the 90 degrees are, where this is turning straight that way and straight that way, and you want to maybe orient the logo uh, towards that. So now this is basically going to be picking up the sides, and this is going to be picking up straight on the guitar. And what you can do afterwards is that you can send this track to another bus and you, um, or basically duplicate the signal is another way of doing it. And if you invert the phase, it will cancel each other out completely. But if you then pan it hard left and hard right, you will get this uh, additional stereo image and the space of the guitar that's basically listening around this area here. But when you fold it to mono, it'll still retain, retain its mono compatibility because this microphone will be picking up the guitar in general. And at that point, it's going to sound like this. So once you've recorded the MS technique, uh, this one being the cardioid origin, and this one being the figure eight spirit here, uh, you'll end up with two tracks. And what you need to do for the MS is to duplicate the spirit track in this case. And uh, you can do this in two different ways. You can either use a send or you can just duplicate the track completely. And that's what I'm doing here. And what you do is you invert the phase of this signal. You can do that multiple ways. You can either completely invert it by just inverting the entire waveform, or you can put an EQ plugin on this track uh, and use the polarity switch on that so that when you have these two tracks, they are completely 180 degree out of phase, as you can see here. And what happens there is once, once, when these two tracks are out of phase, you actually won't hear either of them. Um, so let me just play this clip here. So you can obviously see that the guitars are playing but because they are 180 degrees out of polarity with each other, they're canceling each other out completely. Uh, this is, and if you put the origin in here, you'll hear the origin only. And it isn't until I start panning these hard left and hard right that you'll start hearing them. So I'll do that while it's playing so you can hear them appear. So now you have uh, both of these tracks on each side of the stereo spectrum. And then when you add in the origin, which is the cardioid mic in the middle, you will retain that mono compatibility and you'll have that direct mic as well, giving you a wide stereo image using the MS technique. So I'll let you hear the origin only so that when, uh, if you play it on a system that, you know, uh, flattens everything to mono, you'll at least have this origin uh, playing in your mix. It's obviously better to have both. All right, so just to recap, make sure that your guitar is in tip-top shape. 
then find where it sounds the best in the room um, and then place the microphone about a foot away and experiment until you find the sound that best suits the arrangement of your song. All right, so try out those recording techniques the next time that you're recording acoustic guitar. If you're interested, check out Aston Mics at astonmics.com. Learn more audio production tips at audioissues.com and head on over to icelandicembassystudios.com to learn how we can help you with your productions. In our upcoming videos, we'll be talking about how to record vocals and how to record vocals and acoustic guitar at the same time when you have a singer-songwriter that feels most comfortable doing both at the same time without losing uh, clarity and separation in, in your recordings. So stay tuned for that. I'm Bjorkman Benedictsson. Thanks for watching.